Everyone got their tickets. Please take your seats. The concert is about to begin. Let us introduce Melodious, this new deck profile from Team The. Please enjoy and leave all questions and feedback at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Now the star of the main deck is Arya, the Melodious Diva. Here we see three copies of her. She is by far the most important due to her effect that when she's special summoned, all Melodious monsters cannot be destroyed by battle or cannot be targeted by card effects. So that alone puts her as a 3 of, in my opinion. To accompany Arya, I play two copies of Sonata, the Melodious Diva. Now this lovely lady can special summon herself when you control another Melodious monster. So that's where she helps Arya out. So Arya, special summon Sonata, and then Sonata gives a 500 attack boost to all Melodious monsters. Following Sonata, we have Cannon. Now similar to Sonata, she can also special summon herself when there's a Melodious monster on the field. So that's pretty cool because with other Melodious being the same level as her, she can be used for an Exceed summon, which isn't exactly the main goal of the deck, but the option is there if you need, if you need to. Now I did say Arya was the star of the main deck, but just because she's the star doesn't make her my favorite. That goes to Opera. Because just look at this girl. I think she looks pretty dang cute. For a level 4 monster with 2300 attack, what's well, not to like? But of course, she cannot attack the turn she's normal summoned. But you can bypass that by special summoning her. In a way that I'll get to later. And if you use her as a fusion material, for fusion summon obviously, you can make all melodious monsters unaffected by card effects and they cannot be destroyed by battle just for that turn. So keep that in mind. Next up is Tam Tam. And just like my friend over here, Opera, she joins us from Clash of Rebellions, which is the recent addition to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. And when we special summon Tam Tam, she can grab a polymerization from our deck or graveyard. But another Melodious has to be by her side. Now when you use for a fusion summon, make the monster that you summon lose 500 attack. And if it does, you deal 500 to the opponent. That's like, okay, but it works with, um... One of the fusions, Bloom Diva, kind of like how Yuzu used it in the show. And then we have Soprano. So uh, Soprano, this girl is the one that allows for fusion summoning without the use of polymerization. But we have to use Soprano in that fusion summon. And when she's special summon, she can grab back a melodious monster from the graveyard to our hand. So let's say we have a fallen, I don't know where she is, Sonata right here, They're perfect. We special summon Soprano, we can drop Sonata, and then perform a fusion summon. Not bad at all. Not bad. Now for the last two remaining Melodious girls. We have Elegy and Mozarda. You gotta put them at the end because of their high levels. Level 5 and level 8, respectively. Now, Elegy is pretty cool because she has a nice function with Arya. Because, I'll put her aside for now. Because when she's special summoned, she makes all Melodious monsters I control not be destroyed by card effects as Arya makes them not be dis not be targeted and destroyed by battle so this is essentially a soft lock plus she gives them all 300 attack only when she's special summoned though now onto Mozarda she serves a different purpose than the other girls because she is a melodious maestra maestra monster that's right she is the teacher in a way and she's important in allowing us to fusion summon Bloom Diva, which I'll get to when I go to the extra deck. But aside from that, her effect is that you can special summon a light fairy type monster from your hand, but I cannot special summon other monsters except for light for the rest of the turn. And it's a once return effect. So that's alright. She's not bad. But she helps with Crystal Rose. Now, Crystal Rose is not a fairy type, it's not a girl, it's just a rose. That, just a rose. Okay, whatever. Alright. Now, Crystal Rose's effect is pretty unique because you can send a Melodious Monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard to copy its name. So, I usually send these two. And I can also banish a Fusion Monster to special summon it back from the grave. So, it's pretty good. Pretty much, you send um, Mozarda, copy the name, and then fuse with it. And then send Elegy if you don't want to draw into it or something like that. Which is a good idea since they're high levels. These next monsters are mainly used for support. And as you can see, two copies of Honest and one Summoner Monk. 
The Honest are defensive and offensive weapons that can be used throughout the duel. And Summon the Monk, well, he has nice synergy with Arya, like special summoning her, and then she her effect is active. Special Summon Soprano, grab back a Melodious, and then Fuse. Or Special Summon Tam Tam and get Polymerization. So they have nice synergy with the girls. Now on to spells. Now I do not want to make this concert drag on. So from now on, only the unique spell cards and traps will shall be explained. So, first movement solo. This card is very cool because it allows us to special summon a Melodious Monster straight from the deck. But she has to be level 4 and below. So that leaves us with all these as choices. Pretty good in my opinion, since most of them get effects when Spiral Summon, so of course, I'll play three copies. Two Polymerization and a Fusion Recovery for our Fusion Aspect. The remaining spell cards are Book of Moon, Mystical Space Typhoon, two copies, Foolish Burial, Soul Charge, and Regeki. Foolish Burial is kind of like our, another version of Crystal Rose to send Melodious to the Grave. Soul Charge allows for big plays. Haunted Traps. This is my revival trap of choice. Powerful Rebirth. Full playset. It's kind of similar to Call of the Haunted, but the monster is not bound to the trap. So if they destroy the Powerful Rebirth, your monster stays. And the difference is that this card gives your monster 100, 100 more attack points and one level increase. So all of these girls benefit from this. And Elegy is here this time. Now the level increase is minor, but in the extra deck I do play a rank 5, and you'll see it soon enough. The remaining traps ends the concert. We have 3 Mirror Force, 2 Breakthrough Skill, Bottomless, and Compulsory Evacuation Device. Now the 3 Mirror Force seems kind of an overkill, but this deck needs the defense. And Breakthrough Skill I chose it over Effect Veiler because I did not want to get tempted into playing Synchros since I play Soul Charge. That's it for the main deck, now onto the extra. We have three Schuberta, the Melodious Maestra. Schuberta is the boss monster, in my opinion, because she's disruptive as heck, and she can get really, really big. So when she's fusion summoned, you get to banish three cards from either player's graveyard, and then she gains 200 attack per card. So she starts at 24, goes up to 3,000. Pretty good for a boss monster, and very disruptive. But her effects only once while she's face up on the field, but with cards like Book of Moon, we can do it again. Now for the other fusion, Bloom Diva, the Melodious Choir. Now unlike Schuberta, which Schuberta is just any two Melodious, she's the one that requires a Melodious Maestra, so Mozarta and Crystal Rose, Shenanigans, but you can also use Schuberta. Now her effect is it only works on special summon monsters, and she cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. And I, you take no battle damage from battles involving this card. Then after damage calculation, you inflict the damage to your opponent equal to the difference between this card's attack and the opponent's monster. And if you do, you destroy it. So it's pretty cool, and that's where Tam Tam comes in handy in lowering her attack point. Now onto some exceeds in the extra deck. We have. Teller Knight Ptolemyus, Stellar Knight Constellar Diamond, and Constellar Pleiades. Now this is like a mini small extra deck annoyance in a way built for let's say dark decks with Diamond, Ptolemyus into Diamond, and then you can Pleiades. But the Pleiades is also here due to the powerful rebirth that increases the levels of our Melodious. So we can technically exceed into this one normally. Not enough explanation there needed for these. Now for the remaining ones, we have Dark Rebellion Exceeds Dragon, Constellar Omega, Number 101 Southern Honor Arc, Castell the Sky Blaster Musketeer, Star Leech Paladynamo, Fairy Cheer Girl, and Gagaga Ga Ga Cowboy. The only ones to kind of talk about are these three right here, since they're light and fairy specific. So Fairy Cheer Girl for draws, Paladynamo to negate effects, and also draw a card when he dies and Consular Omega for protection. Before we conclude, I shall touch upon some important factors of the deck that maybe you guys might want to know. Well, the first one is, this deck, as you guys can probably guess, is not as popular in the tournament scene. It doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I usually build decks that are quote-unquote fun, and this deck is definitely one of them. It was a challenge to put one together that worked, and I'm glad I got a decent build. So, 
I highly recommend testing this out or trying your own version. If you like characters from the show and like using their cards, this one is, is a pretty good example. The second is how does this deck usually win? And for me, it's usually by Arya and Sonata. You're just attacking, poking, and then dropping a Shuberta every now and then to hurt the opponent's graveyard. That's how it's been turning out for me anyways. So if you try this out, let me know how your victories come. The concert has finally come to a close. So thank you for sticking through, and I shall look at all your suggestion and feedback my audience has given to me. And with that, I shall leave you with this. Isn't Yuzu a tease? <sighs> She's pretty hot though. Yuzu needs to get on that.